All right, welcome to the experimental part of lab number six. Remember this is called the RC circuit, resistor capacitor circuit. And what we're looking at is the circuit diagram, the original circuit diagram. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw this switch right here so we can let current flow out and charge up a capacitor. And we're gonna collect all that data. And then we're gonna shut off the power supply, which effectively means we're gonna throw the switch over to this point right here and then discharge it so you can see what discharging looks like and you can compare that and see the negative current uh, and you can compare that with the the charging part but you will be responsible for just the charging part now what we're going to be looking at is the current flowing okay the current flowing from the battery to the capacitor and then we're also going to look at the voltage across the capacitor right there all right so I got it set up right here and I'm going to show you everything, how it's hooked up. This is our power supply, 4 volts. Uh, it turns out you got to, for these capacitors we have in our real lab, so uh, here's a capacitor right there. Here's another one. These capacitors right here are rated for 16 volts. This is a 330 microfarad capacitor. That's pretty big. I got 100 uh, in the circuit right there. But anyway, it turns out if I raise the voltage too high, that the behavior of these things uh, doesn't do what they're supposed to do. The, it's just a little bit too much voltage, and it starts forcing current through the capacitor, and it shouldn't be doing that. So it's actually Acting like a wire rather than a capacitor. So when we do the experiment uh, in the regular environment of the lab, we usually just go by half volts and then go up to like five or six volts and then stop right there uh, because these aren't rated very high. All right. So anyway, uh, we got power right here. So power is coming out of the um, this really nice DC variable power supply, and it's going to a current sensor. So you can see when you put a current sensor in the circuit, you have to. To break it like you did before all right so it comes out here broke broke the circuit then it comes out here and it continues along here's the switch right here all right this is switch right here and um, I just have a single pull because discharge it. I'm just going to turn off the power supply. So I don't need uh, two poles for that. And uh, so then it goes over here and there's a resistor. All right. And going down here, there's a capacitor. And it's funny. I have a discharge lead on this capacitor right now because the, the sensor itself is actually charging up the capacitor. And in fact, I have sent six of these units back to cap to, uh, to Pasco to be fixed because that is a problem. We end up getting bad results on this experiment, and it's probably because of the, of the sensor charging up the capacitor. All right, and that's it. And then it goes back, uh, back home right over here to the power supply. All right, so what we're going to do is, uh, and one more thing I want to tell you, when you actually do the experiment, uh, and you're going to do it on multi-SIM, you're going to change the resistance. So this resistor value here is about 1200 ohms. So you could make it like half that much or one quarter as much. In fact, it's nice when you make it like four times. Four times a good number. Or you can make it four times bigger. So you can put like a 4000 resist, uh, ohm resistor in there. And all you have to do in multi-SIM is double click on the resistor and change its value. And remember, always give it like three or four significant figures. All right, because multi-SIM only gives it two. All right, so anyway, we're gonna go ahead and, and run this thing on capstone. You've seen these curves before because in the capacitive circuits lab, you had to measure the charge. And you were actually messing around with the, um, the exponential decay of the current and you did the area under the curve. And that's going backward, backwards from the math we did on the board earlier. All right, so let's go ahead. We're gonna run this thing. We're gonna look at the voltage and we're gonna look at the current. Now, cool thing here is that I can actually put voltage and current on the same graph by asking for a second axis. So you go up here and there's a little green star right there. You click on that and you get another axis and you can see it over on the right. So that's my voltage. It's plugged into uh, port B. And my, my current sensor is in port A. All right, and time is along the x-axis like that. 
All right, so we're going to go ahead. I'm going to pull the uh, the probes off of here. Okay, and uh, I got it set for 50. It's taking 50 measurements every second, and I push record, and then I'm going to throw the switch. You can see it's already got. Uh, and the capacitor. And you can see, bam, it's all done. So I open that, wait, let me, let me go ahead and turn the power supply off, boom, and you can see that's discharge. Wow, we're right back to zero. All right, now let me stop that. And I can blow this up so you could see it better. All right, so I'm gonna pull this apart, pull this apart like this, and I'm gonna change the color of this guy. That's a nasty color, very hard to see on the screen. So I pull it, put a nice uh, dark, dark color right there. Ooh, blood. All right, so anyway, there it is right there. And remember, you got the area under the curve. So that was the charging of the capacitor. The voltage was going up exponentially. And then finally, when it's fully charged, you can see it was nice and constant. Then I closed the switch. And when I closed the switch, I took the battery out and then it unloaded and you see it's got negative current now so currents flowing negative and the voltage on the capacitor is going down 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 it's losing its charge all right and that's it so uh, when you do the experiment though you're only interested in this data over here all right and then you're going to change out the resistor and take a second set of data so you'll be looking at voltage as a function of time across the capacitor and current as a function of time that's going through the circuit to charge up the capacitor two times two different time constants all right and that is it see you later